And boom, how you doing? And welcome back to the treehouse. Finally instantiated in the new place. And I think I got all the tech uh, gremlins out of this. I just want to say hello, Enigma Wave, Donut Expert, something Milfy, uh, Hubba Hubba Horror Night, for, yeah, and Farouk. How you doing, Farouk? Well, that intro, that's footage from one of my favorite movies, The Chambermaid. And oh, Farouk, thank you for that up there, subscribing above my head with the running zombie. Yeah, The Chambermaid is a great movie. Track it down and find it. I think it's on Stars. And you could do a free trial of Stars on Amazon Prime and just watch as much Stars movies as you can within that seven day window. That's the winning strategy, right? And um, I just want to see here something Milfy saying. Must have thing was in Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Oh, yeah, the goo that's coming out of the without warning uh, alien disc things. <laughs> I guess everyone was full of cheese in the 80s. Badoom, ch. Well, we're going to go right from that lovely line and very entertaining sentiment to our first feature for the evening. It's going to be a cartoon, Russian cartoon from, I don't know, 1960s or so. I actually forget, but around there. And it's from our good friend Yuri Norstein, who we're going to be seeing a lot more of later on as these get deeper and deeper. But this is something he did that's a little bit of a kind of frivolity animation cartoon thing. Very joyous. It's called Film, Film, Film. And what's fascinating about it is that it is, you know, it's Russian. It's uh, on the other side of the big iron curtain. But it is about the movie industry. And so it's kind of how they saw the whole movie industry. They had a movie industry too, but it's interest, you know, but I think what they're doing is they're kind of extrapolating a lot of these tropes. And it's funny to see what got through the Iron Curtain to them about what uh, Hollywood culture was like. And, uh, oh, and we get something here, Gaming Belike. What trees are in the house tonight? <laughs> film, film, film. You, that's right. That's how they sing it. They sing it. Film. Uh, that almost hurt. That almost like was you have bite one of those sweet tart candies and, and go, eh? Like that. Used to dare people to do that when you're a kid, right? Make them crunch sweet tarts. Um, well, you did it in my neighborhood, right? So anyhow, we're going to go right to this right now. Let me just turn out the lights. Now, for this one, we can uh, talk and comment and chat and all, of course all this stuff right you, you folks can always chat because there's no sound but we can do all that because this one is just kind of a romp so let me just uh, turn out the lights here and uh here we go with film film and film oh whoops it wasn't yuri norstein sorry it's fyodor kurtuk i, I can do that oh 1973 so almost the 1960s, right? And Albert has been to Tampere, Finland. Tampere. I like the way Finns say things. <laughs> yep, yep, Buster Keaton. I want to see this is all Hollywood uh, icon neutral things. And, uh, <laughs> and whoever that was and whoever they are. I'm sure they had a fun life. Because we're almost having a fun life. Hey, listen to this. Be a sweet dream. Oh, I almost buzzed. i got to get ready for buzzer. You never know, right? You don't come to me. Oh, that's cute. Here we go. <laughs> oh, or Albert. It's I did screenwriter Albert. Oh, that was me. That was me about halfway through Chompies. No, that's not true. Chompies, I wasn't like that. Which one was like that? It's maybe Spock one. I don't know. It's tough. The Muse. The Muse gonna give him an idea. Yes. Of course. Chompies could turn into anyone. See that. That's Albin. Yeah, I'm always sitting like that too. And I'm always doing that except I don't have paper. That I am always doing because I do have walls. 
But wait a second. Chompy's on an island. <laughs> Sorry. I'll cut that out. I'll cut out the Chompy references. <laughs> oh, I want to smoke. I want a real cigarette. I just like looking at smoke. Because look, you look at smoke. Uh-oh. I never seen the smoke noose. It ain't gonna work, pal. Oh. Well, maybe it will work. Oh, nope. Doesn't need to do it. Tippity tappity typity 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 typity. Oh, the hair, the glasses, the tippity typity. This is perfect. <laughs> Now, for those who want a really obscure deep cut, I think that is a reference to Otto Preminger. Because <laughs> he's almost got Jodpers. But, you know, he could be any director. For all I know, um... I guess, for all I know, Christopher Nolan looks like that. Oh, he started the music. The success. <laughs> There it is. See, after I write something, I'm embarrassed. I don't, I, I, I put it out there. I release it, and then I just make a little obscure references to it. I can never follow, follow someone down a hallway holding something I did. Oh, too long. Oh, ouchie. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, get rid of that. Get rid of it. Yeah, get rid of the meaning. Get rid of the subtext. There you go. See what it says. Too short, man. All right. Put back in the pie fight. <laughs> See, this really is what happens kind of with screenplays, not with plays and not with novels. Oh, baby. It's nice. It values the nice touch there. Pop mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we got it. We got partial funding from uh, Singapore. No, oh, we lost our funding from Belgium. But let's go get some more funding. Hey, Canadians invested. No, they're not investing. Damn it. <laughs> this is your brain on screenwriting. Oh, I like that comment. That's very true. Cigarette smoke turning into a noose is a controversial new push by Dare. Hot Dare. That would work. Well, it would not work. Nothing works. Smoking's too much fun. I hate to say it. I don't. I mean, I do. I mean, I don't. But, um, yeah. This is giving me anxiety, hence I'm not a screenwriter. Well, the thing about this is, and what's really coming to the forefront here, you know, screenwriters are not protected artists, not in the way that playwrights and novelists are. Playwrights and novelists can be prima donnas about this stuff. Screenwriters, you just hand it in, and then they start assigning other writers to it to fix it. And then maybe you'll still be in the credits, maybe you won't. There's only a few screenwriters that have ever done uh, kind of unique authorship work. I approved, like Robert Town, um, who wrote Chinatown. And Joe Estahas was big for a while. And he could get away with saying, you don't change a word, or I kill you. However, they'd still cut it to bits, right, in post-production. Because you, you wrote it, and just because we filmed it doesn't mean it's getting on the screen. Oh, that is the, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. That is awesome. Uh, that looked like Los Angeles all over again, which is now hundreds of miles away from me. But at the same time, it's close enough to drive. So it's always there. Maybe when we're not there, it doesn't exist. <laughs> don't, don't! Ah! You know what? I'm always losing in video games that way. The big thing that pushes you, it keeps coming toward you, and you gotta do something real quick. I get intimidated. <laughs> and then the actors in and screw up whatever is left. Ah, oh, that is so true. Or they improve it massively. Like all the Christopher Guest movies. Great improv. Oh, damn. Now 
I do feel a little less like smoking. See you next. <laughs> oh yeah, and the producers changing the end. After the test audiences. Oh. abstract geometry, which at the same time is representing exactly what we know to be the chaos of complicated structural hierarchical movie making. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. There is a certain point in the process where they stop returning the screenwriter's calls. They absolutely stop, as they probably should, because you want to let them down gently by just ignoring them if they see what's happening to their movie on the set. Oh. But at the same time, a lot of screenwriters, they get paid and that's all they need. Mm. Of course. by Ridley Scott is what we're just looking at right here. Oh, and now it's two-thirds of the movies by Ridley Scott. <laughs> Something Melfi says, I'm also losing it in supermarket aisles that way. Big lady pushes you with a scooter. Oh, yeah, you got to see him coming from far off. To get away from the scooter, otherwise they could corner you. They could, they could, they do a triangle maneuver. Stick you right up against the can of goods, baby. <laughs> I can't do it yet, I don't want to cover this lovely animation. I won't do it yet, I fight him. Ridley Scott's The Ball. <laughs> hey, Stella, how you doing? We're having some fun here with a Russian cartoon called Film, Film, Film. And we're not doing it. We're not doing it justice. You'll hear when they do the song again. That's it. $1.5 million ruined right there. Hey, this was a lot like Terry Gilliam's Man of La Mancha movie. Uh, the four, first four times he tried to film it. Game of Black says skeletons are cool, and skeleton smoking, retro smoking is cool. See if you use the syllogism, it's, it becomes true. <laughs> and one. This is like Terry Gilliam's Man of La Mancha. Ever see, it's a documentary so called Man in La Mancha, I think it's the documentary where they show he's always trying to film, and everything goes wrong, everything goes wrong, and then everything goes wrong, and it's fascinating documentary. Hey, watch that one of these uh, movie matinees. Oh, I got a cue right there for the movie matinee. Actually, for this, this Saturday, I'll tell you about it after this. I thumbs up on that too. That was magic. Okay, great. They say never use animals, never use children in making a movie. No animals, no kids. I mean, part of it's because they make you do that when you have to give them direction. But the other part of it is, of course, that they are famously disobedient. As I have a feeling we might be about to see here. Scooby Dooby Dooby. I love how the workers there are, are dressed in kind of, it looks like Soviet sailor costume. Yep. And action. Action. Come on. Hey, bow tie. Action, you do the thing. Come on. <laughs> I'd love this cartoon. 
<laughs> We're never getting that out of our heads, are we? That guy dancing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That, that girl is very cute. Very, very cute. Take 149. Oh, uh, this is fun. I love this. <laughs> Come on, David. You do the thing. Right? This happiness. Oh. God damn. <laughs> She says she's got it, but then... Okay, 49. <laughs> Perfect. It's a print. It's a... Oh, God. <laughs> Whoa. And the ground shook. She's the hero. She's the hero. <laughs> you have the sign saying, I do acknowledge you are over budget. Now do it. Yep. Oh. You're the cutest thing ever. Your disobedience makes you cuter. Let's say. And the one. And the two. And the uh, two. Song here, stay. We go film. Oh, scene, scene 164. Perfect. Oh, no, do it again. You know, I really am getting Ridley Scott movie flashbacks. I kind of got a Kingdom of Heaven feel to it. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, it's still good. Oh, now he's Kubrickin'. Stanley Kubrick, famous for multiple, multiple, multiple takes. And now I can do. Where <laughs> you do coffee sips? I got people seeing. And, uh, three. Uh-oh. Well, well, you know what? I kind of... Uh, he had a dead inside look. So you just have the outside match the inside. That's really what it is for a lot of people. Retirement homes. Oh, rather die. Ever go to an old folks' home and you think you'd rather die than just be killing time like that? Barely sensing. Yeah, you gotta go out on top. Or at least you gotta go out with clarity. Because you wanna be, you know, you wanna be conscious of all that you've done. You don't want your memories lost to you. And you're gonna finally take that step off the edge. And cut. <laughs> but we each gotta do that. Oh, too depressing. Come on. Okay, so we. So, pie fight. Bring back pie fight. Uh -oh. Travel. I'm ashamed I even know that much about the Avenger movie. All right. 
that just the way some time for excess? <laughs> and uh, you know what? That applies to this whole cartoon. That that statement. Oh, this reminds you of a little bit of Wag the Dog. Yes. Yes, it does. That was a great behind-the-scenes film. Um, did David Mamet write that one? Because Mamet's a really interesting writer. Um, go out shooting people on a defunct roller coaster. Hi, oh, damn. Hey, where the premiere? That's good advice. Thank you, to whom? How you doing? It's why cancer can be a blessing. You get a time frame. If caught earlier, that's true. You get a defined set of last days. So then you maximize them. Oh, they're waiting for the response. Oh, and screenwriter's back. Oh, they, sh oh, they, they got the little poodle shivers. Oh, little chihuahua shivers. Chihuivers. Ch Chihuahuivers. Okay. Huh. Hmm. Okay, so I'll, I'll turn up the microphone a little bit. I think it's because I'm getting too into the cartoon, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm leaning away from the microphone to watch it. <laughs> oh wait, I'm hearing clapping. No, it could be for something else. That clapping. Hey, how you doing, Spill Monkey? Uh, you know, that reminds me, actually, of a, another story. You know who John Houseman is? No, uh, John Houseman. I'm going to let it run through the credits here so we get to see what he's doing here. Oh, he's doing the tear up the script thing and the pacing around. Okay, so you know who John Houseman is, right? John Houseman is the partner for Orson Welles. He was sort of his manager and business partner was Orson Welles, was sort of the creative side. Well, John Houseman did a, a play early on in his life. It was one of the first theater things he ever did was Gertrude Stein's um, Five Saints and Four X. And um, he w it was successful. It was very talked about uh, from what I've read about it. It was... Uh, Maybe not so good, uh, you know, relative to today. Let me turn the lights back on so I can say hi to you people. Um, let's see here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that. Hey, how you doing? Okay. So anyhow, John Houseman, in his uh, one of the first volume of his autobiography, says that at the end of the night, when everyone had gone out of the theater, he was left alone on the stage. But his production had just happened to open the night where it was big. And he said he'd laid face down on the stage and just sobbed right into the wood at a stage. And so, yeah, emotional release of tears. You see it a lot in theater. Right. Let me get back to a little bit of a, an image here. <laughs> okay, that's a good image. All right, so I could get to the comments. See how we're doing. Um, Hugh to Hoop says, I know people that died in their sleep and healthy to seemingly that scary. Uh, it's one of the worst things in the world. It's, it sometimes even happens to kids. And it's just out of nowhere, right? When you're sleeping, you just some little chemical thing, some little arrhythmic heart thing. That's why, you know, you got to count your blessings. You get to an age like Albert, you think, ah. Oh, I guess I'm done, right? I guess it's over for me, the whole climbing the ladder. But at the same time, hey, I didn't die when I was 13. And brother, I'm probably the same with a lot of you, right? 13, you had uh, as many brushes with death as you had teeth in your head. Okay, um, I think Danny DeVito, when I see that director, good one. Because Danny, directed, uh, Danny DeVito, Danny director, Danny DeVito is an accomplished filmmaker. If you ever see the movie Hoffa, he makes some very bold camera choices in there, very non-obvious ones, and that's another movie written by David Mamet. And fascinating, weird movie, Hoffa, in a lot of ways. Um, usually when that guy does a park bench, you avoid him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do try to avoid people on park benches at all costs, even the normal-looking ones, because... Um, they, what are we doing on a bench, 
right? The only person you do not avoid on a park bench is Albert, right? Apparently, because whenever I'm on a park bench, people want to sit next to me and talk to me. And uh, I love how the screenwriter, this is from Farouk, love how the screenwriter tries to jump out the window even after the applause starts. Yeah, he doesn't trust it. It's cute. He doesn't, he doesn't trust it. He doesn't believe it. Doesn't film it. Gaiman like, I had to Google it, but David Mamet wrote Wag the Dog with two other people, Hilary Hinken and Larry Beinhardt. Huh, I wonder if he was brought in to clean it up fix it because he's done that before or like I think on Ronin he was brought in to do that which is that uh, Robert De Niro movie or was it that um, he wrote it first and people thinking it's just too dark because he's a very dark writer what's the one he did that was just so dark I can't remember the name of it. it has William Macy in it you could barely watch it it's so dark but he also did Glengarry Glen Ross which for a movie, it's brilliant and unintentionally funny at the same time. I, Stella, yes, to rather being dead than in the retirement homes. Absolutely. Look, it's, it's a phrase I remember. A samurai's life is not measured in years. Right? And this is another phrase from the, the whole samurai movie culture. Um, he or she who is determined to, oh, what, what was it? Um, yeah, he or she who is determined to live a long life, no matter what, is also destined to die a dog's death. I think this is an interesting one. Hey, uh, Albert and Forrest Gump are the only two people I would talk to on a park bench. Damn, so that's one more than me, because I would talk to me, and I'd talk to you, too. Okay, so that's two. I'd actually, I'd talk to all of you, so what's that, seven? Ten? Um, but, oh, hey, thank you, Oskiv. Uh, Ox Steve. Ox Steve. Okay, Steve. Um, thanks for that up there. Um, but I don't think I would talk to Forrest Gump. I mean, I would talk to Forrest Gump if I could see his movie from the outside. Right, but just Forrest Gump himself on a bench, I would think maybe this guy wants to have a little time alone. He looks like a guy who would rather be alone. Um, and even if not, I think he's a guy that I would rather he be alone. Uh, when I'm drunk, this is a hue to hoop, when I'm drunk, I talk to people, they're probably <laughs> drunk. <laughs> yeah, when you're drinking, all the rules change. All the rules flip. In fact, if we could drink in the retirement home, admit to yourself, I, Stella, the retirement home now seems much more attractive. Booze, opiates, everything. Because what are you, 85? What do you care? Right? Shoot, inject it right between your toenails, right? Inject it uh, wait, under your arm. Who cares? Right? And then just do speed on top of it to snap yourself up for matlock when it is. Um, Forrest Gump talked at you. Oh, that's very interesting. That's an interesting observation. Something milfy. Speaking of dogs, Yojimbo is my favorite movie. Yojimbo's fantastic. Uh, I saw a lot of those old Yojimbo movies. Eating popcorn at a movie theater in Santa Monica, which would show one every Sunday when I was a little kid. Seeing them on the big screen with a whole bunch of fans and eating that lovely movie theater popcorn. So good, right? It's all that coconut oil. Oh, there's so much coconut oil in me still. And I think, don't you get that feeling that so much of what you ate is on the inside of your veins and it's still tasty? It's still tasty. It's going to kill you. But you can't say it's not tasty. Gaiman Black says there's an alternate ending of Office Space on YouTube where somebody who sounds just like Lumberg tells the construction people if they can move something over there, that would be great. And I like some, like that ending so much more. Interesting. I'm going to have to see Office Space again to uh, figure out what that means. Was that an extra ambiguous ending? Because uh, I'm a big fan of ambiguous endings. Big fan. I love it because then it's like life. So the ending of John Coppin is the thing. Uh, and I mentioned this in Champies. But I, I, the ending to Escape from New York, kept those a couple John Carpenter movies, maybe his best two movies. And uh, wow, just ending with a, what? 
what is, what is what's going to happen next? What does this mean? Is everything ruined? Is everything going to be okay? I love that feeling. It's sophisticated, says the man gesturing with a fake cigarette. Put the opium directly into my heart. <laughs> well, we've got our first country western love song here on uh, the Never Got Famous stream. And that's it. We, got, we just got the title. We can work the lyrics later. Game and Black says, My grandpa grew weed in his backyard in a state where it was illegal until someone recognized it and told him he should probably get rid of it, so he took it to the basement at all. Like 80 years old. Oh, fantastic. That's the 80 years old we should be doing stuff like that. They live in Hobo with a Shotgun. Great endings. That is true. That is true. Uh, they live, it's like a kind of sort of ambiguous ending. Hubble with a shotgun. That was free on Prime and I missed it. I got to watch it again. Don't spoil the ending. I'm going to watch it soon. Uh, maybe it's on Shout TV. I got a seven day free trial coming up on Shout TV so I can watch the Gamera movie. Of course. Uh, the one from 1995. Well, this has gotten obscure and off the rails. So, all right, folks, I've been running my mouth a lot here and you've been very kind and very patient to listen. Uh, to all this going on. But for this next one, I'm going to zip my lips for two-thirds of it. It is Dimensions of Dialogue by Jan Schwankmeyer, one of the great surrealist short films of all time. Two parts of it are very serious and very intense and weird and maybe, you know what? Serious isn't even the word. There's just a certain dreamlike gravitas to him. However, one third of it is more humorous. And I think we can do a little different version of it with just a little bit of uh, extra audio. I mean, just a little bit. I, you know, I'm a Jan Schwankmeyer fan and I bought retail copies of his DVDs. So I think I'm good with him. Right, I hope he got some money from that. Being in the Czech Republic, who knows? I mean, now he would have, but back then... Um, just want to see a couple more comments here before we get into dimensions of dialogue. Game and like, it went from more Peter's happy doing manual labor to actually manual labor sucks too hard and so does life, idiot. Got it. Spill Monkey, the most effective movie ending ever. The Fog. Yeah, the original one. The 1981 one with Carpenter. Shrink. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's just shrink. Yeah. Um... So not really ambiguous, just more negative. That works too, right? Schwanktastic, says Farouk. That is a wonderful word. Good on you, Farouk. Spill monkey, the mist rather. Oh yeah, that was it. Well, um, no, the mist has a, a real grim, 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 grim ending. Maybe the grimmest ending. Grimmiest? Grimmiest. The gr grimmest ending of any movie ever made the original first version of the Mist movie, but The Fog has a great, great reversal ending. Anyhow, folks, let me turn out the light. I uh, hear. Huh. Oh, yeah, that's right, because it's supposed to be that way. I'm turning out one light and then the other light. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Dimensions of Dialogue by Jan Schwankmeyer. Thank <laughs> you. 
Cognitive uniformity. That's how the dialectic works, right? Thesis, antithesis, synthesis. Folks, that's relationship for you. Now, <clears throat> we have here a table. Oh, look at Right, just in there, together, in the table. And you just... What do you think it had? Hmm? Oh, so we agree. 
That's good. That's good. Well, what if I did that? Yes. Full agreement. I am one man in your shoe. Look what I could do for you. In shoe. Nice. Yeah, but look at what I get here. This ain't gonna work. Let me just tongue it for you. I don't know, wait a second. You think you're better than me? Maybe you looking like you look like you're better than me. Oh. Oh. So it's like that, is it? Is that you? Oh, oh, oh. What the hell? That. Okay, that. That was my toothbrush. Oh, so you're buttering my shoe, are you? <laughs> Alright, that one's cute. Hey! Hey, they. <laughs> Almost buzzer. Are you buttering my pencil? <laughs> I love this. I love object to object. Oh. <laughs> no, that's not, you don't, no, oh. And yes, you're probably right, it is cow tongue. Because they, Schwankmeyer and his animator used lots of meat products. They actually have this very short film called Meat Love. Which we may show him someday. Oh! Whoa! How can you even do that? Oh yeah, will you take that? No, no, you? Okay, yeah? Alright, then, yeah! Oh yeah, well, I'm gonna do that to your toothpaste. Oh, your toothpaste got a thing on it. Oh yeah, how'd you like to brush your teeth with some butter? That ain't even gonna work. So you are thinking you're better than me. So, that's how it is. Maybe we'll like, you wanna try this? Oh, oh, no. Okay, paper, scissors, rock. Nope, okay, we we'll both, both bread. No, we, we can't butter each other. Butter doesn't butter butter. Oh, oh, what are you cleaning? You're cleaning the other way to nothing. No, that's a waste. Okay, so what are you gonna do now with your pencil things? You can't sharpen a sharpen thing. You can't, look what you did. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dimensions of Dialogue by our good friend who is still alive, I believe, Jan Schwankmeyer. In fact, let me get, let me, let me uh, oh, that, not that, not that, let me, uh, let me see, yeah. There we go. Fantastic. And let me just uh, turn back on a little treehouse lights here. Hey, everyone. Well, I can't wait to see the comments. They've been going on while I've been looking at this and giving it a little bit of vocalizing. Uh, oh, what is the title of this? It's Dimensions of Dialogue. Uh, I probably said just now, actually, probably said it again. I think this is an allegory. I think you are completely correct. All of the disagreements here, in fact, all the short films you see, absolutely clay being more human than humans are. It is cow tongue. Uh, I'm almost sure if it's not cow tongue, some other similar animal, horse tongue. Nah, they'd probably go with cow tongue. Toothbrush plus pencil sharpener equals prison shank. Enigma way of thinking of the practicalities there. Game and Blake says, it's about war and how the original conflict becomes lost in the violence of the intergenerational cycle of violence and toothbrush tongues and clay something. I don't know. No, you're onto it. Yeah, absolutely. It is about that. Well, it's also, you know, Surrealism has its own rule set, which is dream logic. Now, the great thing about the best surrealism, like Schwankmeyer, and I feel Salvador Dali. I love the Salvador Dali paintings. I know it's not art school fashionable to say you like Dali, Salvador Dali, and it's mostly because he was such a self-promoter, like Jackson Pollock wasn't, right? But no, um, the thing is, is like the great surrealism has dream logic, but the important word there isn't dream, it's logic. Because dream, you think of, well, it's just randomness. No, dream logic. The logic means that somehow it is making sense. 
It's making sense to the part of you that deals with dreams, but it's not random. It's nowhere near random. It is its own set of logic, but it's the kind of logic you would encounter in a dream where there were logical properties. Uh, Farouk, they're both falling apart. Yes, they are. May need to try toothbrush plus butter for fun. Donut expert, you are assigned. You're on the case. Let us know how it was brushing your teeth with butter. And I'm not even kidding because we might just now have got a Silicon Valley idea. Toothbrush that comes with its own butter pump thing. Um, you know, we, it's, it's either that or cryptocurrency for us. How else are we going to get rich, right? We just, we're just too, too authentic, all of us. All of us watching, too authentic to get rich, I'm afraid. But not too authentic to get enough money to be comfortable enough to avoid overlords, which is low six figures. Um, uh, Stinging Golf 395 encapsulates it in one word, society. Boom, Farouk, that was wild. And what I'm glad that I got to do for you folks is I got to give you a good copy of it. This is a copy taken origin from a, a great factory DVD. Um, so the version on YouTube, you can imagine what YouTube compression does with these grays. It doesn't do, doesn't do them justice. Game of Blake, meat love might be the worst possible combination and order of two English words to use on Pornhub. So we're not going to. We're not going to. Society is very important film. Oh, that's a cute quote. I like that. Game and Blake. It's a silent film, but the title implies it's about dialogue. The dialogue isn't real, but all there is violence. I'm going to smoke a cigarette in a cafe in Paris while pretending to read existential literature. You don't need to. You just bypassed all of that necessity by just typing that one comment here in the Twitch chat. That was wonderful. So, and that's our exit. Well, folks, thank you. I loved this treehouse very, very much and had a lot of fun sh sharing this with you folks. So tomorrow night at Spy Fox at 6.30 Pacific. And you know what? I just want to let you know these tree houses, and this is what this, the joy of living at a place where internet connection is assumed. I now have strong internet. I mean, fingers crossed. Did I just jinx myself by saying that out loud? But um, we've got some great things coming up in future Monday tree houses. Believe you me. And I still had a great suggestion that's coming up soon. And uh, anything more from Farouk, we are cycling it in. Those custom subtitle things that are so cool. And there we go. Just brush your teeth with butter from Donut Expert. Uh, um, Farouk doing the Frenchy. Ho, ho, ho. We, we, God is dead. And um, Farouk, don't worry. I cast an anti-jinx. Bingo. That's it. That's how the universe works. Something milfy. I used to dance under the name Butter Pump. So that was you. Huh, guys, we've got an embarrassing backstory, don't we? Don't expect <laughs> laughing. Game of Black, I used to dance under the name Meat Love. Well, now I'm happy that we na don't have a, we do not have a backstory together, Game of Black. Anyhow, I'll see you tomorrow night at 6.30 Pacific for some more Spy Fox, probably finishing Spy Fox. Good night, folks. And have a wonderful uh, dimensional evening, the rest of it. Bye-bye.